Welcome back, my friends, to the tutorial that never ends. I'm so glad you could attend. Step inside, step inside. Today, we're going to be discussing how to use unbuild orders in the manufacturing app. You see, oh doers, running a manufacturing operation isn't always about building stuff. Sometimes you have to unbuild something that you've previously built. This can be necessary for a variety of reasons. For example, you maybe you built too many units of an item. Or perhaps you want to unbuild a product so you can use its components to manufacture a different product. Whatever your reason, and I'm sure you've got a good one. Odo makes it exceptionally easy to unbuild products, all while ensuring that inventory counts for finished products and components remain accurate. So, enough chit chat. Let's jump into our Odo database now to see how this all works. So, before we create an unbuild order, I want to quickly show you a couple of things. First, let's take a look at the actual on hand counts for the product that we're going to be unbuilding our coat rack as well as the components that are used to build it. So to do so, I'm actually going to jump into the manufacturing application over here. I'm going to select products up at the top and products once again. Now, as you can see from each product card, I have one unit of the coat rack in stock over here. As for the coat racks components, they actually happen to be the wooden dowels and the wooden pole. And I have whatever units that I have on hand. But you need to remember these numbers, which happens to be 715 and 91. So write them down somewhere. And spoiler alert, something is going to change. Now next, we're going to take a look at the bill of materials or bomb for our coat rack. So I'm going to get there by clicking on the coat rack product card right there. And immediately, I could just use the smart button up at the top. And there we are right there. Now let's take a look at, in our case, we actually want the very first one right there on the list. So we're going to select that one. And let's take a look at the components tab right here. Here we can see that one coat rack is made up of a wooden pole, and then six of these actual dowels down there. This means that when we unbuild a coat rack, we should be left with that number of each component. To see this in action, let's get to what this video is really about, the unbuild order itself. So to create a new unbuild order, all I actually need to do is select the operation subheading up at the top, and then I want to select, you guessed it, unbuild orders. Now we're going to select new in the top left. On this new order, I'm going to start by selecting our coat rack product over there. And then everything is set. When I do that, you'll notice that the main bill of materials or bomb for the product is automatically selected in the bill of material field that we have right below it. If I want to choose a different bomb, I can actually do so by clicking on the drop down menu right there inside of here and selecting something else. In our case, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to mess things up. Alternatively, I could also select a specific bomb in the bill of materials field before selecting a product, in which case the product field would auto populate with the corresponding product, which is kind of nice. Now inside of the quantity field, I can actually specify the quantity of the product that we need to unbuild. For this example, I'm going to leave it at just one unit. Now if the product being unbuilt was originally created in a specific manufacturing order, I can actually select it in the manufacturing order field over here. And let's see. It actually gives us a full list right there. We can actually select any of them. We'll just pick one. Now the source location field that we have, which happens to be right below it, is used to specify the location where the product being on build is stored. The destination location field is used to specify the location where the reclaimed components will be stored after unbuilding is completed. Both of these fields are set by default to our main warehouse location. I'm just going to leave them as is for this order. All right. Now that this form is all filled out, let's actually go ahead and pretend that we've disassembled our coat rack into its components and they're all behind me. Now with that done, all we have to do to complete the unbuild order is click on the unbuild button in the top left. Boom. Once that we do that, we'll notice that the stage indicator in the top right corner of the form moves from draft to done. And just like that, we've unbuilt one unit of our coat rack product and registered it inside of Odoo. Now, you would expect the inventory counts for a coat rack and its components to have updated automatically. But, let's just do a quick check to make sure that that's actually what's happened. So to do so, products up at the top, and products. <clears throat> now, from the product cards, I can actually see that the number of coat racks on hand happens to now be zero from one. And while the on hand counts for the wooden dowel and wooden pong... <laughs> wooden poem. Wooden pole components, sorry, smaller dupsy, have actually increased by six, which happens to be the dowels, and one for the actual pole. Perfect, that's just what we expected to happen. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, what happens when I try to create an unbuilt order for a product that I don't have on hand? Well, like all things that we try inside of Jose's Odoo Labs, 
Let's take a quick look. As an example, we're going to use the coat rack product, which now is actually at zero. So for that, I need to first is select operations once again, on build orders, and you guessed it, once again, new. Select that coat rack once again inside of our products, let everything pop you, click out of that, and you'll notice once that everything is done, we're going to select unbuild. And oh my goodness, would you look at that? I have a warning, and this warning is that I have an insufficient quantity of coat racks to unbuild. Now, Odoo will allow me to proceed with the unbuild order, which I can do by clicking on confirm right there on the right. However, as the pop-up states, this may lead to inconsistencies in my inventory. I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to click discard right there. All right, before I let you go, there's just one more thing. Sometimes during the unbuilding process, a component becomes unusable for one reason or another. When this happens, it is necessary to remove the component from inventory using a scrap order. If you want to learn how to do so, check out the video in the description below, or I'm going to include a link to our video on scrap orders. And that's all I've got for you folks. Today I showed you how to disassemble finished products into their components using unbuild orders. Stay tuned for more exciting tutorials, because I know you will. I love you. Have a great night.